Good morning again and welcome to Central Church. As always, this is a Jesus Church where everyone is welcome, where no one is perfect, and everyone is loved. And amazing things can happen. Uh, I still miss you, and I say that every week, but I mean that. I, I really miss you. And I've got a lot of emails from folks saying we really miss being together as a congregation. And, and we all miss that. We, we don't know how the opening will happen, but we continue to pray for the Lord's guidance and for the Lord to, to do good things and amazing things that we can be uh, together with each other again. I don't have a lot of information for you this week. Uh, I have a, a sad note. Uh, Donna Colon, uh, her mother passed away last week. They've had the, the funeral already. Our hearts go out to Donna and Andrew and uh, their family. Uh, may the Lord, Donna, uh, take care of you, hold you close to his heart. I know that you walk with him every day. May he continue to walk with you and carry you through this difficult time. Uh, it seems the folks are doing well. Uh, most of our folks are doing well well, and I'm really, really glad to hear that. We also have a short message from Kerry, so let's uh, hear what Kerry has to say. Good morning, Central Families. I want to take a moment to share with you some things I've been thinking about this week. Statistics say that as parents, we have about 3,000 hours per year with our children. In that same given year, the church, on average, only has about 40 hours. So parents, we are the ones with the greatest opportunity to influence the lives of our children, to shape their worldview, and to lead them on their faith journey. What happens at home is more important than what happens at church. With that in mind, I want you to know that as a church, we are for you. We're in your corner, and we want to invest in the life of your family. One of the resources that you can take advantage of right now are the weekly videos and the parent cues sent to you by email and are also posted on the website. The videos include music the kids love and an age-appropriate Bible teaching. The parent cues give you ideas and activities that reinforce the monthly themes. This month, the theme is unstuck. The bottom line, don't give up. God knows the end of the story. Jesus endured through the pain of the cross so that we would be able to have a forever relationship with God. God gives us the Holy Spirit to empower us, to keep us going, even when life is difficult. I hope your family has a few moments this week to check it out. Please know that as a team, we continue to remember you and to pray for you. We are for you. Hope you have a great week. Thanks, Gary. Uh, and now it's time for us to worship the Lord together with our praise team. Time. 
just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your God. Come.
a wonderful way to start the morning as we worship the Lord together. Pray with me. Father God, thank you that we can be together even if we're sitting at home. We know that we are bound together by your Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit of God, you are the one through which we live. You are the one that gives us strength to go through the day. You are the one that comforts us, the one that holds us, the one who is there with us every step of the way. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that as we walk on this faith walk, we can walk in your footsteps because you've been there, done that. And there's nothing, Lord, that together we cannot do. Thank you, Father God, for the gift of your word that is inspired by your Holy Spirit. And as we read these words, thank you that you speak into our lives. We pray in that amazing and precious name of Jesus. Amen. So our scripture reading uh, today comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 22. I'm going to read verses 1 to 14 from the NIV. Genesis 22. Some time later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham? Here I am, he replied. Then God said, Take your son, your only son whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Uh, just, just a little side note. Not the mountain. Never says mountain. It's not the mountain. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain. You see, a mountain that I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father? Yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac, laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up, and there in a thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place. The Lord will provide. And to this day it is said, On the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. I, I wonder if you will agree with me, my friends, if, if I said to you that, that our faith walk is, is a constant conversation with God. Me, God, God, me. And sometimes these, these conversations can be so amazing that we just don't want them ever to end. But then come the difficult days, the, the dark days, when things are not that easy. And then these conversations become really, really difficult and hard and sometimes a little silent. And then sometimes we'll continue this conversation with other people like friends or, or we'll just go do the internalizing thing where we just talk with ourselves. But if we look, close, look closely at these conversations, 
the one thing that we'll see is that it says something about my relationship with God. And, and hold that in, the, that in the back of your head because we're going to talk about that again. These conversations say something about my relationship with God. And that's exactly where we find Abraham today. He has just had the most difficult conversation with God when God came to him and said, Abraham, I want you to go sacrifice your only son, Isaac, as a burnt offering. That was the one offering in which nothing was left. It was all burnt up. And now, Abraham has to live his faith. It's far more than just saying words of yes, yes. He has to take his son, and he's on his way to go sacrifice Isaac. On the way there, I want us to listen in to a few conversations that I think Abraham had. And the first conversation, I think, is a conversation he has with others. Let me explain. So he's got the donkey. He's got the wood. He's got the two servants. He's got Isaac. And there they go. But the most important thing that they need for a burnt offering is not there. There is no sacrificial animal. So here's the question. What is Abraham going to say to people when they say, Abraham, where are you going? And what are you going to do? For up to this point, my friends, we don't have an idea of how Abraham has processed all of this. He's silent. Doesn't speak to Sarah. Doesn't speak to Isaac. Doesn't speak to the servants. Servants. He just gets all the stuff together and then says, let's go. That's it. His actions are clear, but we have no idea what's going on in his mind. Now, he could have, could have done a couple of things. Abraham could have played the martyr. Could have put the sackcloth and the ash on his head, walk around and everyone, oh, Abraham, what's wrong? Oh, poor old Abraham, we have to pity you. And Abraham pities himself. And oh, I'm so sad. He could have played the anger card. Angry at God, angry at the world, angry at the situation, questioning God, God's loyalty, who God is in his life. But he doesn't. In that moment, when Abraham breaks his silence, he says the most profound words. You'll find them in verse 5. And Abraham said to the servants, Stay here with the donkey. I and the boy are going over there to worship. And then we will come back. We will come back to you. God says, go sacrifice your son. Abraham says, I am going to worship. I'm going to praise God. I'm going to be in the presence of God. Abraham says, I am going to profess my faith. I know God. I trust God. And I love God. And I'm going to go profess that. Abraham says, I am going to go and have communion with God because I know God will provide. See, Abraham doesn't focus on the crisis. Abraham focuses on God. On God's grace. On God's mercy. On God that will provide. On God that has always been faithful. And God that will be faithful. He turns his crisis into a moment of worship. Why can he do that? Because Abraham knows God, but not with head knowledge. Remember I've said to you before, the word know often in the Bible, Hebrew uses an interesting word, the Greek has different words, but the word know, especially in the Old Testament, is the word yada. It says Adam, yada, Eve, and she had a child. It's an intimate knowledge. It's a relationship knowledge. knowledge. Abraham knows God intimately. That's why he can turn a crisis into a worship moment. 
Abraham loves God and know that God loves him and only gives the best. Abraham trusts God because right up to this point, everything that God has said, God has done. See, my friends, that's faith. No, it's not blind. Faith is to know God, to trust God, and to walk with God. I think Abraham had a second conversation. The one he had with himself. I think it's inevitable, because here we go. Verse 6, verse 8 says, was him and the boy, and they're on their way. And you can just imagine what's going on in Abraham's head. And I'm sure the first thing that, that would come to his mind is that he would have so many reasons to not do this, to turn around and just stop and go back home with Isaac to, to Sarah. I'm sure he could have this conversation in which he questioned the value of faith. When faith in this moment takes away, when faith in this moment asks everything and I don't know what I'm going to have left. But you see, my friends, that's exactly what happens when we start the thing going in the mind. And that's exactly what Satan loves, because that's the moment Satan gets in my mind and he says, yeah, look at God. Is he going to take it all away? Why is your life difficult? Why are things not that easy? That's the way of the world. Because you see, the world wants us to have a prosperity theology, where everything is perfect. God never promises that. But Abraham chooses the way of faith. And you know what that means, right? Hebrews 11, verse 1. For to have faith is to be sure of the things that we hope. I hope there's going to be an animal, but I'm sure there's going to be an animal. To be certain of the things that we cannot see. I don't see an animal yet, but I'm certain that God will provide the animal. That's what faith is. To be sure of the things we hope. To be certain of the things that we cannot see. There's a, there's a poet, songwriter called Michael Cart. Wrote this beautiful song about faith. He says, To hear with my heart. To see with my soul. To be guided by a hand I cannot hold. To trust in a way that I cannot see. That's what faith must be. There's a third conversation that Abraham had, and I think this was the most difficult one of all. The conversation with Isaac. And I have no idea how difficult that must have been. I have no idea how I would have done that because every word was a word of farewell because in his heart, Abraham had already sacrificed Isaac. And then came that moment that I'm sure that Abraham dreaded. Verse 7. Father, we have wood and there is fire. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? <laughs> what is Abraham going to say? Is he just going to tell a bold-faced lie? Or is he going to look Isaac in the eye and just be cold-blooded and say, Sorry, bud, it's your time. You're done. Look at Abraham's answer. And this, my friends, is the turning point of this whole message. Verse 8, my son, God himself, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering. See, Abraham isn't cornered by this difficult question in this crisis moment. And his answer isn't a cop-out or a lie. It's the answer of faith. Faith that says, I hope there will be an animal. I'm sure there's going to be an animal. I can't see the animal, but I'm certain that God will provide. That's the answer of faith. Because faith knows that God will provide in God's way. 
Faith knows that God will give strength. Whatever God asks, God will give the strength to get through that. For me, Isaac, for you, Isaac, God will provide. And that's the most beautiful words in this text. In the Hebrew, in verse 14, when he says, that's why they call this place, the Lord will provide. It is Yahweh Yireh. The word provide in Hebrew that they use here is the word Yireh. Many of you know this by the wrong name, Jehovah Jireh. There is no such thing as Jehovah Yahweh. Yahweh Yireh. Yireh in Hebrew comes from the word Ra'ah, which means to see. The Lord will see. So some translations will provide, the Lord will see to it. Because you see, my friends, here's the thing. When Yahweh sees, when the Lord sees, it's not just, oh yeah, I see. The Lord sees, and His heart comes into action. When the Lord sees, His whole being comes into action. And when God's being and God's heart comes into action, God does. And that's why this beautiful translation, the Lord will provide. Because God sees me, Isaac, and He knows. God sees you, Isaac, and He knows. And when God sees and God knows, God will provide. And when God provides, Yahweh Yireh, the impossible becomes possible. And that's why we can call it worship. So stay here with the donkey. I and the boy, we are going over there. And we will worship. And then we, that's what faith says, will come back. Because I know Yahweh Yireh, the Lord, will provide. God Himself will provide. Amen. Pray with me. Amazing God. God who provides. God who provided on the mountain your one and only son. And no, there was no other ram or lamb. There was only Jesus. And you allowed him to die for us because God provided. How much more, Lord, do you provide even in our crisis so that we too can say, I call it worship, for the Lord will provide. Amen. my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my Savior on that cursed tree his bound and drenched in tears they laid him down in Joseph's tomb the entrance sealed by heavy stone Messiah still and all alone oh Praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore. For endless days we will sing Your praise, O oh Lord. 
break of dawn, the sun of heaven rose again. Oh, trampled death, where is your sting? The angels roll for Christ the King. wonderful to spend this morning with you and thank you if there were folks that have visited us for the first time wonderful to have you visit with us please join us again next week because we will continue to worship the lord together and and now as as we continue our week and we do the things that we need to do for the week know that god understands and god is there and god will provide so receive the blessing of the lord the Lord will bless you and keep you. The Lord will make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord will answer your prayers and give you His peace. Amen. <laughs>